All right, so we're diving into Pi cryptocurrency today. You've been hearing about crypto everywhere, right? Bitcoin, Ethereum. Yeah. It seems like there's a new one every day. Every day. But it can feel like you need a PhD in computer science to understand any of it. It's true. And let's be honest, most of us don't have time for that. Right. It can definitely feel overwhelming. A lot of the initial excitement, especially around Bitcoin, was this idea of cutting out the middleman in financial transactions. Right, like that example in the Pi White Paper. Cindy wants to send Steve five bucks. Yeah. But using something like PayPal means fees, waiting periods, and a whole lot of hassle. Suddenly, a simple transaction feels like navigating bureaucracy. Exactly. And that inconvenience is a pain point Pi wants to address. They're presenting themselves as this more accessible, user-friendly alternative to traditional finance. They're aiming to tackle those frustrations you just mentioned, those pesky fees, the lack of control, and even the potential for censorship. So imagine being able to easily send money to your family overseas with virtually no fees. That's the kind of accessibility Pi is going for. It's a pretty bold claim, but is it hype or is there something more to it? That's what we're here to unpack. And to understand Pi's approach, we need to start with how they're tackling one of the biggest hurdles in the crypto world, mining. Yeah, the mining thing always throws me off. I picture these giant warehouses with rows of computers using enough energy to power a small city. Not exactly environmentally friendly. Well, right? yeah, you're spot on. Traditional Bitcoin mining is incredibly energy intensive. Pi wants to change that by using a different system called the Stellar Consensus Protocol. Now, don't get too technical on us, but give us the layman's version. How is Pi different? Think of it like a digital voting system. Everyone on the Pi network, just by having the app on their phone, helps validate transactions. It's a clever way to achieve consensus without those massive, power-hungry mining farms. Hold on. You're saying I could potentially earn Pi just by having the app open? How does that not drain my battery? That's a question many have, and we'll get to that a bit later. But it's part of Pi's core strategy in making participation easy and accessible. They've created these different roles within their ecosystem. Pioneers, contributors, ambassadors, and nodes. Okay, so instead of game levels like I was picturing before, maybe think of it more like a community with different roles to play. So break it down for us. What does each role actually do? Good point. It's more about contribution than competition. Pioneers are your everyday users who mine Pi. Contributors verify transactions to keep things secure. Ambassadors, well, they spread the word, invite others to join. And nodes, they're like the backbone of the network, helping to process transactions and keep everything running smoothly. I see. So everyone has a part to play in making this whole thing work. But that brings up a big question. How do you actually make Pi valuable? I mean, if everyone and their grandma can mine it on their phones, does that make it less valuable than something like Bitcoin with its limited supply? That's the million pie question. It's all about striking that balance between accessibility and scarcity. And it's a fine line to walk. All right, so how does Pi walk that line? They can't just snap their fingers and make it valuable right. That's where Pi's economic model comes in. And it's pretty different from Bitcoin's. They're trying to learn from Bitcoin's successes and its challenges. So what did Bitcoin get right and what are they trying to avoid? Well, Bitcoin's fixed supply while making it incredibly valuable also created this digital gold mentality where people hoard it, speculating on its price. While that's great for early adopters, it's not ideal if you want to actually use it for everyday purchases. It's like, congrats on having a Bitcoin, but good luck buying a cup of coffee with it. Exactly. So Pi is taking a multi-pronged approach to try and avoid that problem. They've got a fixed supply per person who joins the network, at least for now, while the network is still growing. Then there are those referral bonuses you mentioned, rewards for developers building on their platform and... And importantly, those rewards decrease as more people join. It's like catching the early bird discount. The earlier you're in, the more you stand to gain. Precisely. They're aiming to reward early adopters for their trust and effort while still ensuring ongoing participation is worthwhile. Okay, I get the strategy, but does it work? That's the million pie question, isn't it? Does Pi's model genuinely prevent the same kind of wealth concentration we've seen with Bitcoin? Is this sustainable long term? Or could those early birds still end up with a disproportionate piece of the pie? These are all questions we'll be exploring as we dive deeper. This is already making my head spin a bit, but in a good way. It's fascinating to see how they're tackling these challenges. And speaking of tackling challenges, this white paper hints at something even bigger than just a new kind of currency. They're talking about a whole pie-powered internet. Now, that's something I have to hear more about. Okay, a pie-powered internet. That sounds ambitious, to say the least. What do they mean by that? It's a bold vision, that's for sure. Um, they're essentially talking about leveraging the pie network. 
To create a more decentralized and equitable internet experience, imagine a world where users have more control over their data and how it's used. More control sounds good to me. Right now, it feels like these big tech companies are getting rich off our information and we're left with targeted ads and privacy concerns. Exactly. And that's the problem Pi aims to address. Their white paper outlines this concept of a shared trust graph. Instead of relying on companies like Amazon or Yelp for reviews and recommendations, imagine a system where trust is established through the Pi network itself. So like instead of trusting a random five-star review on Amazon, I'd see recommendations from people within the Pi network, people whose opinions I might value more. That's the general idea. It's about shifting power back to users, giving us more control over what we see and who we trust online. They even talk about building a decentralized app store. Imagine a world where developers aren't beholden to the rules and fees imposed by companies like Apple or Google. Okay, now that would be a game changer. Developers could keep a larger share of their earnings and users might benefit from more innovation and lower prices. But let's be real, can this actually work? Building a whole new internet seems like a tall order, even for something as promising as Pi. It's definitely ambitious, no doubt about it. And it hinges on one crucial factor mass adoption. For a Pi-powered internet to work, you need a critical mass of users, developers, and businesses all bought into the ecosystem. It's like that old saying, if a tree falls in the forest. And no one is around to hear it doesn't make a sound. Precisely. The success of this vision depends on whether enough people believe in it and are willing to participate. But it's not just about the practical applications. The white paper also gets into some pretty fascinating ideas about how Pi could change the way we interact online. Okay, now you've got me intrigued. What kind of interactions are we talking about? One example that caught my eye was this idea of scarce social media. Scarce social media. So the opposite of my endless Instagram feed. Tell me more. Think of it like this. Imagine a global Instagram where only one post can be seen at a time. Users would have to bid using Pi to have their content featured, and the highest bidder gets their moment in the spotlight. Wow, that's wild. So it's like a constant option for attention. Yeah. It would definitely make you think twice about what you post. No more posting about your lunch, I guess. Exactly. It forces you to be more mindful, more creative, more intentional with your online presence. It's a radical concept, no doubt. And whether it would work in practice is anyone's guess. It's definitely outside the box. But I have to admit, there's a certain appeal to it. Cutting through the noise and focusing on quality over quantity, it's almost refreshing in a weird way. But okay, okay let's say hypothetically I'm on board with this whole pi powered internet idea. What's the roadmap look like? How do we actually get there from where we are now? So we've talked about the vision, this whole pi powered internet, but how do we get there from here? It all sounds great in theory, but what's the actual plan? That's where the rubber meets the road, right? The Pi Network has a phased rollout plan. They're currently in the beta phase, which is all about testing and refining the technology with a smaller group of users. Think of it like a beta version of a video game before it's released to the public. So they're still working out the kinks, getting feedback from early adopters. Hmm. What comes after that? The next big step is the test net. Um, this is where they'll put the network through its paces on a larger scale simulating real world conditions and making sure everything is stable and secure. It's like a dress rehearsal before the main event. And then the grand finale, the mainnet launch. But I noticed there are actually two stages to that, enclosed mainnet and open mainnet. What's the difference? Good catch. That's an important distinction. The enclosed mainnet is like a soft launch. Pi will be listed on cryptocurrency exchanges, but trading and transactions will be restricted to within the Pi ecosystem. It's a way to ease into things, ensure stability, and prevent any major price fluctuations right out of the gate. So still a bit of a controlled environment. Then once they're confident everything is running smoothly, they transition to the open mainnet where the floodgates open. And Pi can be traded freely on the open market. That's when things could get really interesting. Absolutely. But before we get too far ahead of ourselves, there's another critical aspect of this roadmap we need to address, KYC. KYC. Is that another one of those crypto acronyms I need a decoder ring for? Not to worry. It stands for Know Your Customer. It's a standard process in the financial world to verify the identities of users and prevent fraud. Pi is taking KYC very seriously, and for good reason. So this is all about making sure Pi isn't used for any shady business. Exactly. It's about building trust and legitimacy. They're aiming to ensure that one person equals one Pi account. Preventing people from creating fake accounts to game the system. It's crucial for their long-term sustainability. That makes sense. So how does this KYC thing work? Do I need to go through some kind of intense background check? 
It's actually pretty straightforward. They're using a combination of automated checks and manual reviews to verify user identities. And here's a key detail from the white paper. There's a grace period after the mainnet launch for users to complete KYC. Any unclaimed PI during that period gets reallocated to active verified members. Okay, that's a pretty big incentive to get verified sooner rather than later. Absolutely, and it reinforces the importance of doing your due diligence. If you're considering joining the PI network, take the time to understand their KYC process, what's required, and the timelines involved. It can make a significant difference in the long run. Great advice. So as we wrap up this deep dive, I have to say I'm feeling a mix of excitement and healthy skepticism. Pi is promising a lot. A more accessible cryptocurrency, a more equitable internet, a whole new way of interacting online. It's a bold vision, and it certainly sparked my curiosity. And that's the most important takeaway from all of this. Pi raises more questions than it answers, but that's part of what makes it so fascinating. It's pushing boundaries, challenging assumptions, and forcing us to rethink what's possible. Exactly. Whether Pi fulfills its ambitious goals or not remains to be seen, but it's definitely a conversation worth having. Couldn't agree more. The future of finance, the future of the internet, these are big questions. And Pi is offering a potential path forward. And ultimately, it's up to each of us to decide whether we want to be a part of that journey. Will Pi revolutionize the digital landscape or fade into obscurity? Only time will tell. But one thing's for sure, it's a fascinating case study in innovation and disruption. So do your own research, weigh the potential risks and rewards, and decide for yourself. This is just the beginning of the Pi story. And it'll be interesting to see where it goes from here.